Already moving on to our fourth speaker. Thank you all for joining in. This is the inaugural World Toronto Forum and uh, it's all presented by a unit. We're trying to build the token economy here and we're increasing collaboration by having speakers like Ori, Manny and uh, our future speakers here on board to, uh, to further understand and educate each other on what the blockchain can do and can be for us in the future. So thank you all so much. Again, relay any questions that you have at any time through the chat and I'll be sure to get to them for our speakers. So we have our next speaker here. We have Dr. Durendra Shukla, and he is the director of the, we have the Dr. Durendra Shukla, who is the director of the TME, Technology Management and Entrepreneurship Department at the University of New Brunswick. He's also the co-founder of Grey Wolf AI, and he'll be speaking to us about protecting crypto consumers. So, so Durendra, thank you so much, and uh, please share with us your experiences so far with Grey Wolf. Yeah. There we are. Oh, perfect, perfect. <laughs> Seems like an awesome event. It's lots of fun. great, uh, uh, lots of great speakers and 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 things like that. So thank you for the for the invitation. A little bit about uh, my journey to to what what we're doing right now in terms of at the University of New Brunswick and at Grey Wolf. So uh, I, I I spent about fifteen years working at Nortel Networks, uh, which was a huge telecom a Canadian telecom giant. And it, it collapsed in 2009. And at that point, uh, I said, let me try something uh, new, something exciting. And that's when I joined uh, the University of New Brunswick uh, to, uh, to lead the, the center and, and the technology management and entrepreneurship program. And since then, we've, we've been recognized as uh, you know, one of uh, Canada's most entrepreneurial university, which is quite exciting. Uh, and uh, you know, and and how does how what's the journey like in terms of how Grey Wolf was formed? Was that uh, uh, during that time frame uh, when I since I joined, there there were two huge exits that happened in in New Brunswick. One was Q1 Labs, and Q1 was bought out by uh, by IBM for around six hundred seven hundred uh, million dollars, and what they were doing was tracking uh, attacks, cyber attacks that were taking place. And then, and then uh, the other exit that happened was Radiant 6 that was bought out by, uh, by Salesforce uh, for about 300 uh, plus million dollars. So quite an exciting movement. And, and when, I, when I was looking at that, in parallel, all we could hear about is crypto and things happening on crypto, not in a positive light. And, and one could argue the reason was that it was a disruptive technology and the existing uh, stakeholders were sort of unhappy with the disruption that it was going to cause. And, and reality was over a period of time, a, a lot more uh, people that started taking over the crypto world were sort of gave, tainted its, its initial vision. The initial vision was giving pow power to the people, giving uh, a, a, a decentralized decision-making and an ability for people to really manage uh, themselves, manage their resources, manage uh, their transactions, and give them a basically an identity and a power and shift the power from a centralized model where the whole model of too big to fail and the taxpayers were bailing them out. So, so this, it was a, it, the concept of crypto was a beautiful concept. Unfortunately, it was tainted with these elements that, uh, uh, that it was being used for illegal activities and things like that. So, what, I, what, what, what happened was connecting the two, one was looking at what is happening on the social media, what is happening in terms of social media monitoring that uh, Radiant 6 was doing, and then connecting it to cyber attacks that Q1 was doing. I said, how can we take the world of the crypto network and connect that to the world that is happening around the crypto from, uh, from the, whether it's the dark web or, media or what people are saying, how can we connect those two worlds 
to create a, an ex exciting environment to set a context of what fraud and, 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 and things were taking place. Hence comes this, uh, this uh, awesome student, while I'm you know, mentally thinking through this, uh, uh, Matthew Sampson, and he says, you know, I wanna do some AI related work. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for something exciting. And the passion and drive that he had was simply incredible. And, uh, and I said, look, uh, why don't you try this project? Uh, 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 you know, looking and, uh, at what's happening on uh, uh, cryptocurrencies, look at what's happening on, at, at that point to the initial coin offering, uh, ICO market was really hot. And, and we were working with the Securities Commission to look at the fraud and scams that were taking place. So he became entrenched into developing the underlying technology. And what is amazing about his efforts was that, uh, uh, that he was so keen to learn, so keen to develop the product that uh, we began to think, look, uh, this is an exciting space. It's exciting because it, it go goes back to the original concept of what cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin was actually set up for. It was set up for uh, giving people power and it wasn't set up for uh, enabling scams and, and, and illegal activities. Come forward, he developed very quickly, gravitated towards developing this product. We went out there, we were so pumped. We, we, we showed it to the Securities Commission. They were very excited. And, and then you know, we, we said, where else could we use this and things like that. We, we formed the company. And uh, you know, since then we've worked globally around looking at fraud and what's happening, helping so many people. Uh, it's been incredible. And obviously there was a recent article in the Financial Post talking about, uh, about how we were able to help the city of Fredericton uh, when, when, when they were hacked and ransom was uh, requested, how we were able to help uh, uh, manage their risk, uh, work very closely with them and, and identify you know, where, where this was happening, what was happening, how they could, the steps they should take to protect themselves. And it came, it came down as, as a great story that was covered nationally. And since then our emails and, uh, and things have blown up for more and more people asking us to help them, asking us to work with them. And while it's very exciting from a business angle, it is becoming very clear that uh, the platform continues to be plagued by people that are using it for, uh, for uh, they're bad actors and they're using it for uh, enabling uh, uh, bad things, uh, suspicious things. And we continue to we, uh, struggle with that, uh, with that uh, in the, continue to struggle with that in the media, continue to struggle with, uh, people questioning uh, the validity of, uh, of the crypto platform and what it's able to do. And I think, but, but I have to give it uh, 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 a round of applause because it, despite all the negativity, it has continued to grow and grow and grow in terms of relevance, in terms of different asset classes that have been developed. And, and you heard all the people that have been speaking on the, uh, on the panels today, talking about it from uh, you know, different type of assets. You brought up those elements, you know, people talked about you know, whether underlying technology could be used for uh, uh, land management, art, uh, you know, and, and it could be used for many different things. And, and it's very, very exciting that people are talking about it from from that sort of uh, world and that sort of context. And it becomes very exciting for everyone to be thinking about what next, where is it going? But we want to step back and say the, the growth can primarily only happen if people feel uh, secure, people feel safe. And some of these bad elements can be, can be removed from our ecosystem. And we want to, Grey Wolf wants to play a critical role to do that. 
we have also at the University of New Brunswick established a research center. We received uh, federal funding and Grey Wolf has uh, set up a center uh, in, in, has contributed from an industry perspective and we have leveraged uh, government of Canada funding to be able to really, really talk about uh, what next, what next in terms of the future of, uh, of, uh, of uh, cryptocurrencies, what next in terms of NFTs, what next in terms of, you know, People are already talking about it and we are buzzing because you're talking about metaverse, we're talking about all those things from a gaming and, and all of those, that world of, uh, that will simply enable cryptocurrencies to play a critical role uh, in, in moving that agenda forward. And Grey Wolf wants to be that partner with companies, partner with government, partner with, uh, uh, with institutions to provide a safety net, a provide a, a degree of security for people to believe that this world is there and their group of people acting to help and protect them. And, and people could ask, look at us and say, these, uh, these are idealistic people that are, but we wanna go back to why it was set up. It was set up for a beautiful idealistic world. And we believe in that central core vision of why it was uh, why it came into fruition, and we want to be part of moving that agenda forward in terms of building trust, building a safety net, protecting good people, and in a way leveraging it the technology to move to the next uh, next level. And we want to play that critical role, uh, and we're very very excited so about uh, about uh, playing a key role in this space. So, so you can see where we've come from, where we saw where it's coming from. And I believe the bad actors are putting a bad rap on uh, a, a layer on, on what is happening on a, on a central technology that's a huge disruptor. So let's go back to the basics of why it was there. Let's go back into building trust and empowering people and giving people the control and let the technology thrive into this in this world where it's going to. And uh, you know whether it's you, you brought up the question, is it for financial transactions? In a way, of course it is. In a way, whether it's whether you're trading markets, trading pictures, NFTs, all of these elements that you're talking about today, we want to create this environment of security, environment of safety, environment of trust, and and as a result, enable the next billion people to be onboarded onto this in, uh, onto the platform because they feel safe and secure and really have fun and feel empowered to do amazing things. And you're, you're hearing it today. And that's why it's such a buzz today. You're hearing people talk about the changes and shifts that are taking place in technology and it's happening now. And it has gone from people just talking about that it won't happen, it won't survive, it won't thrive. And we heard it when we founded Grey Wolf. We heard it every day. Why are you doing this? It won't be around for long. Government will clamp down. You, uh, you know, this, this industry will be shut down. It hasn't. Actually, it's thriving. And in that, as it thrives, we want to be part of that journey. We want to be, have uh, from a university angle, bringing thought leaders, do incredible amount of research on cryptocurrency and blockchain. At the same time, from a Grey Wolf angle, look and work and partner with companies and entities and organizations that really believe in the technology and wanna power a path forward that is kinder, gentler, and creates trust and transparency in a frictionless way. And that's the Grey Wolf uh, model that we have. So, so I, I, I'll take a moment uh, to, to breathe and, and, and then obviously there's more we can talk about in terms of what Grey Wolf is doing right now uh, and where it's going. But uh, I wanted to take a moment to breathe, have a sip of water and, and, and uh, uh, ask any questions that you have and then we'll go back to a little bit more about Grey Wolf. 
For sure. Yes, yes. There's so much to absorb and, and digest there. So thank you for sharing uh, the, the absolute necessity we need for safety in the crypto space, because it's true. There is a bad name because there are bad ap- actors and people are using it with malicious intent. However, the more safety, even as uh, alluded to in the last talk with Ori, the more safety we will start to see greater adoption and um, a sense of solidarity with this this new system we're all trying to build here. I see, I have to mention it, that uh, that your co-founder and CEO is also here in the chat, Mr. Matthew Sampson. So hello, thank you so much, sir, for joining. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to see you both. And uh, it's absolutely beautiful what you guys have been working on together. Congratulations, you guys have just secured another round of funding and it's all in prosperity. What I am very curious about is, um, is, is, is your business model. So how are you going about this? You say you want to partner up with different companies. Are these DEXs? Are these DAOs? Are these um, centralized companies? Or are they the actual cryptos themselves, per se? So, so we, we are, uh, you're right, we, are, uh, we have two models. One is working closely with uh, uh, organizations, companies that are focused on DeFi and helping them look at uh, market manipulation and fraud. We're, we're working on that. That's quite exciting and mm-hmm. relevant and new. And we're, I don't wanna, uh, I wanna be careful. I don't mention some of our partners because uh, there, there are strategic elements to that. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but, uh, and what we're finding and what we're feeling. It, and it's very exciting uh, about uh, how we're able to look at fraud and market manipulation and really move the needle on those conversations too. But what type of partnerships we're forming, we're forming partnerships like, like what we formed with the city of Fredericton, that it, uh, next time they're hacked, next time something ha- uh, uh, strange happens, the, we are on a, a, a phone call away to start investigating and partnering with the law enforcement and, uh, and with, uh, with uh, the, city, the city themselves, as well as the insurance companies. So we are forming this consortium of people that are working with us to move the agenda of protecting in a broader set and and bring the lessons learned on on our platform. So we enable that conversation to take place. Then we partner with uh, crypto ATMs and uh, crypto exchanges to look at uh, uh, and report fraud and scams that are happening early. as, as people report uh, the, the fraud and scams that are happening, we're able to capitalize on that, run our AI tools to see how big this implication is, who else from a portfolio perspective could be impacted and stop future, uh, uh, future scams and frauds taking place. So we, 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 we have, uh, we're working overall if from, a, uh, from a company perspective Anything related to threats, risk, fraud, scam, uh, whether it's market or uh, uh, people ransomware, all of those things taking place, or you know, there's there there are people that are uh, scamming people with with mental health issues, scamming people that are elderly, love scams. There are, there are people being targeted, uh, recently targeted that uh, that were recently divorced and people they were being targeted so much that we are uncovering and we are right in the midst of things a mix of things to begin to unravel ways and techniques to respond faster act quickly and address the needs uh, and uh, of uh, of those organizations and protect their customers so mm-hmm. it's all about acting quickly in in the crypto world and, and we want to be the environment that, that, that makes that happen. Interesting. Wow. So can you take us through that experience with what happened with the city of Fredericton? As you said, there was a, a post that was mentioned about it. And how did they know to come to you guys? And what exactly, what steps <laughs> did you guys take uh, to make sure? Because it's, it's quite the story. I'd love for everyone to hear about it. It's a beautiful, great story. And the, the amount of doors it's open. So reality is that, like, I'll go back to this element. When, whenever you tell anyone, that you're in the in the crypto space, the first thing they say, oh no. So we were supposed to do a demo for the city of Fredericton about what we're doing and stuff. And we waited for an hour and they didn't show up. So so what I said was, okay, so I guess this is, uh, we, we get the hint and we should leave. As I'm, I'm leaving the building, I get a call from uh, from the city saying, "Forget the demo. We've been hacked, and they're asking uh, 
no. They oh, need my. you right away. Right. So so you can imagine, right? Like this is this is how unbelievable the story is. So we're like, okay, we're in Fredericton and we are in the midst of raising a round. And the the city has asked us to help them. If we say no, what signals does it send to our investors and our customers? So we have to say yes, and we have to respond and, and really spend the time energy to do it. I give all credit to, uh, to the team and, and, and Matthew who is here, spent, uh, you know, spent the weekend, crafted the report, sent it out uh, within a very short uh, period of time to tell the city, look, this is what's happening. You need to be careful about what you do as the next step. So we, within a, a two hours, we were able to send out recommendations for the city and what they should be doing. What had happened was the hackers has taken over the Instagram account and were putting family pictures of the account manager's family and what she was doing and kids and stuff like that, as well as putting soft porn. Um, and so it was really getting the staff at the, at the city really uh, concerned, and they were losing a lot of followers. It was having large implications on business, large uh, implications on the morale of the staff. And we said, okay, these are the steps you need to do. This is, this is who you need to work with. Then we triangulated with, with the information they had given us to where the, 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 the hackers were, even though they were presenting that they were for somewhere else, we were able to provide that insight. We were able to provide that, those, that type of information to the police and the RCMP to drive their conversation to the next level. Then we presented it to the insurance company. It was just phenomenal. Uh, we were able to act with speed and, and the city itself has big, uh, became our biggest advocate for what we're doing. And it be we began to address a need where, where they were just putting up their hands and saying, we don't know how to act on these things. We don't know what, what to do. Well, we started giving them a template and coaching them and giving them a deeper understanding. And it became beautiful because, because of that story, because of those conversations, our round were oversubscribed three times what we were wow. looking for. Yeah. So, so, so by, by being good to community, good to society, what that is, it, it had huge consequences on what we were doing as a business. Because what it did was, because of there were so many people being scammed and out of money and things like that, people were really hungry to work with a partner that really cared about customers, cared about community, cared about society. So the people that reached out, people that wanted to invest in this space, it was incredible. It was simply an incredible, incredible journey. And, and I wanted to add, as, you know, as we are looking at crypto and we're tainting it with this, uh, uh, with this lens that there is a lot of scam and fraud taking place, what, what is missing from this whole angle is that even from a fiat where the traditional money is, a lot of fraud and scams are taking place there too. But at this point, there, there is such a lens and a focus on this new technology that, that we, need to, we need to move uh, to a better place and Grey Wolf wants to enable that. And that's what you guys are doing precisely. Look at that example. And you guys were able to clear it up right away. So uh, cheers to the city of Fredericton. <laughs> we, we love that. And it's going to become more globalized soon. I'm sure, as you said, you had partnerships with uh, some major companies and uh, you're moving forward at, at a swift pace. Uh, what I'm curious about is do you guys have a multi-layered service approach where you provide a consulting service, but also simultaneously offer your, um, your interface so as to track if there is money laundering going on and, and, and fault, uh, you know, faulty acting? Yeah, you, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, that, that initial consulting service uh, sort of helped us pay our initial bills in, in a way and, and, the, and that uh, and, and our company put, um, organizations putting us on retainer to help and all of those things. But at the same time, we have a platform for people to log, log on, their, uh, capture a fraud they're experiencing, share that, investigate all of those things. 
uh, and and in other cases there there's uh, they just have access to their a our API and do API calls. So 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 the, the the three sort of ways that we are we we are addressing the market right now. So so service, uh, and then uh, and then obviously looking at it that you have access to our UI our platform to use capture and and communicate fraud and, and scams that are taking place very quickly and effectively. And it ju just generates a report for you that you can send out as well as at the same time, you know, API access that you want to connect to a broader scope of things that you're doing. Okay. I see. So there's, there's a range of, of problems to be solved and you guys are, are tackling that and work but, directly with these companies. Well, and, and, and that, that's why the partnership is a key model because as a small startup, what we are planning to do is as we align with companies, what are their risks? What are they concerning? We wanna have a pulse on things that are going wrong so that our product continues to be relevant and responsive and act. Mm -hmm. So as if you've seen it before. Because we're seeing it, we're seeing yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Because, so we can only respond when we have a good pulse on what the scammers are doing and be able to respond quickly. And that is our, uh, our, our motivation. And that's yeah. what keeps us up at night is how do we stay on top of things? How do we address the needs and want quickly? It's, this is all about speed and we wanna be there. Interesting. So, so on that note, what has then surprised you? You know, walking into the space, you knew that there is an issue. You knew that there were some bad actors at play and, and faulty business practice with respect to crypto. And now that you've started to actually delve into solving these issues, what so far has, has, has you taken back almost where you're like, wow, I did not expect that to happen at all. And, um, and, and in those moments, where, where do you step? So, so we, we thought that uh, our community would be a lot more open-minded to innovation uh, and disruption. You know, we've, we've had a series of industrial revolutions that have been critical. They've been so much, but what we found is people are reluctant about change and, and, and things like that. And they, they have a set process of doing things. They have a set way of doing things. So what we want to do is when you say, you come in and you say, how about looking at it from this angle? Well, I'm okay with what I'm using. So what, what we've had to do is create greater and greater value for those organizations that it becomes, they, they cannot, they have to change because mm -hmm. we provide so much great value that they just see what we're doing makes business sense makes it appropriate, makes it frictionless for them, that, that needs, but, but hasn't been an easy task. I won't tell you that we went in there and everyone just slung their door open, come and work with us, come and work with us. That, that's not what happened. What, hap what, what happened for us was the few that did open up their doors, that, that, we went from, that we went from there to saying, what else are you seeing? What else is happening? and built a product for in, in that sort of context. And that enabled us to create even bigger value for, for other organizations that we were working with. And as a result, we plan to keep growing and changing, be an enabler of shifting the thought process for all the naysayers to saying, yes, because it just makes logical sense because of the amount of value they're creating. So, so it's, it's a, it's a, we thought it would be easier. Startup is never easy. Like, yeah. <laughs> never Honestly. Well. And, and in a way, in a way, if, if it was easy, others would be doing it. And, it's, and we're having fun doing, uh, figuring out how to create bigger value, greater value, greater impact on, on society and community. And we're loving doing it. And it's been fun. That's really great to hear. And, and as you're saying, and from what I'm taking from it is that it's an ever evolving mechanism. It's, it's not just one standardized model that you've initially created. You've constantly evolved it over time to make sure that you're taking care of all the bases so that when you do run into um, another partnership, you know how to solve uh, problems preemptively. And, uh, and, and again, it's not something that you've, it's not new to, new, new to you anymore. So what I'm very curious now about is, it, sorry. They're yes. reaching out to us. They're reaching exactly. out to <laughs> yeah. Interesting is that it's gone from a world that they heard about uh, uh, us and we, we would say that now they reach out to us that we really need you to talk to you. Can you really help us with this? And this is such a beautiful uh, breath of fresh air. 
And, and do you find that that's a lot of word of mouth and just the fact that people know that when someone, an issue has been solved with respect to faulty business practice, then um, someone else will know about it and, and you're one of the only players in the field who are doing so? Exactly. We, we have a unique disruptive business model and an and, and approachable mindset that is collaborative. And because of that, people want to be part of that story and, and that collaborative model that moves everyone forward together is creating a stickiness that wasn't there in, in the past. I see. And, and, and something that I'm personally curious about is, is I know that being that you're the director of the technology management and entrepreneurship or entrepreneurship program at UNB, are there any uh, tactics, models, approaches that you've now integrated into the TME department and into those courses from your uh, experience now building Grey Wolf AI? Uh, I think uh, Matthew, uh, the, the co-founder, and I discuss it all the time because, you know, as a, as a prof, uh, as a corporate, when I was at Nortel, the corporate innovation angle is quite different from running your own startup, managing your own startup, paying, uh, making payroll, from making payroll happen to being relevant, to scaling, uh, to, uh, to being uh, able to talk to the right people, hire the right people for the company to grow. All of it is, is critical conversations that we're pulling back uh, in terms of uh, helping our students, enriching their uh, academic uh, experience. And we've launched so many companies and I think we want to do more and more. Oh, and, and you will be, as, as we've said, you're, you're continuing to expand and, and gratefully so. So thank you for, for securing the blockchain and crypto market. Uh, one more thing I, I really did want to ask you, though, is do you have intentions of pairing up directly with the foundations of crypto, such as the Ethereum Foundation? And if so, what considerations would you have to have when it comes to their consensus mechanisms, such as proof of stake or proof of work? Would you have to change your model based on that? Actually, we, we do believe that uh, working along those, uh, uh, those uh, lines, would really help uh, uh, flatten out the curve in terms of the f increase in fraud. So I think working with, uh, with the foundations and stuff, and we've already started moving down that path. There we go. Well, Dorendra, I could talk to you all day about crypto protection. So thank you for your work. You and Matthew, again, who is thank here you. on the call. Thank you. Thank thank you. It's, been, uh, it's been such an honor and, uh, and hopefully we get to connect soon. Please tell people where to find you uh, so that they can connect to you and Grey Wolf in the future. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Anthony. Cheers. Enjoy yourself. Thank you. Bye.